Hi everyone! In this video, I'm gonna show you how to convert a C-sharp object into a JSON string, and also how to control different aspects of the serialization process. You'll see how to generate pretty JSON strings, ignore properties and null values, change the naming convention, control date-time formatting, and also how to avoid circular reference while doing serialization. So, as you can see, a lot of different features that we as developers use every day. For this, I will use both SystemText.json and Newtosoft.json libraries. So, let's start with the serialization process first. I will use this class for the SystemText.json serialization actions. Now, let's create a new serialize method. And inside, I will add a single object of the product type with populated properties. Next, let's add a new JSON string variable. And to convert this object into a JSON string, I will use the JSON serializer class and call the serialize method and pass the object that I want to serialize as an argument. Lastly, let's simply print this JSON string. Now, just for your information, I already have prepared all the different models inside the models folder. So, after this implementation, we can simply copy this method and use it inside the class for the Newtsoft serialization. So, let's paste it. The code is almost the same, except for the serialization part. Here, instead of the JSON serializer class, we have to use the JSON convert class, called the serialize object method, and provide our object as an argument. Now, in the program class, let's simply call both methods and check the result. We can see the object is serialized into a JSON string as a single line string. But of course, it can look better. We can easily achieve that better looking output with system text JSON by using the right indented property of the JSON serializer options object. So, let's modify the serialize method in the system tag JSON class. I will add a new options variable and use the JSON serializer options class to set the value of the right indented property to true. Also, I have to pass the options variable as the second argument to the serialize method. The process is almost the same for Newtsoft except for different class and property names. Again, Let's modify the serialize method and create a new options variable by using the JSON serializer settings class and populating the formatting property to formatting.indented. This is the enumeration we can use with Newt's JSON. Also, I have to provide a second argument inside the serialize object method. So, let's start the app to check the result. And you can see we have a properly formatted JSON string. Great. Now let's talk about the property naming conventions. Despite being a common formatting option, none of these libraries will format property names using camel case by default. But forcing that rule is quite easy with both libraries. With system tech JSON, we need to explicitly set the property naming policy property to JSON naming policy dot camel case. Of course, if you check the JSON naming policy class, we can see all the different policies this class supports. With Newtsoft, we have to do a bit more work. First, I have to create a new resolver variable and add an instance of the default contract resolver class. where for the naming strategy property, I have to set the camel case naming strategy. Of course, we have different strategies if we need to use them. Also, inside the options, I will call the contract resolver property and populate it with the contract resolver variable. Now, let's start the app again. And as you can see, 
both libraries generate camel case JSON properties when serializing objects. Ok, this looks great, but what if we want to ignore some properties during the serialization? One specific scenario is when we do not want to include the properties that contain null values. So, to show how to do that with systemtag.json library, let's create a new method and name it serializeIgnore. Inside, I'll have the same object just with these two properties set to null. Now, let's add the options for the serialization. And inside, I want to set the right indented property to true. And the more important property for this use case, default ignore condition, set to JSON ignore condition dot when writing null. And let's use this as a namespace. This will ignore the property with a null value. Of course, we need to create a JSON string and use the JSON serializer dot serialize method and pass both arguments, as we did in our previous method. Finally, let's simply print the JSON string. Now, for Nutsoft, the process is similar. Let's first copy the previous serialize method, change the name to serializeIgnore, set these two properties to null, and remove the contract resolver variable and the property from the options. Now, all I have to do here is to populate the null value handling property by using the null value handling dot ignore enumeration. To test this, let's comment on the previous method calls and call these two new methods. Let's run the app and as you can see, the resulting JSON string will not include any of the null properties. But of course, we don't have to ignore only null properties. We can also ignore any specific property from the object. Both these libraries include attributes that will let us provide serialization options for each property separately. The most basic example of this is the JSON ignore attribute that exists in both libraries. To show that, let's simply paste a new method in the system text JSON class. As you can see, Everything is the same here, but let's say that I want to ignore the financial rating property from serialization. All I have to do is to modify the customer class and set the JSON ignore attribute on top of the same property. Of course, pay attention to the namespace. It must be from system text JSON. Now, let's do the same for the newts of class. Here, let's add a new method. You can see the different named object I use for serialization. So let's navigate to that class and again use the JSON ignore attribute. Just this time I'm using it from the newts of JSON namespace. With all this in place, we can comment on the previous method calls inside the program class and call the two new methods. Let's start the application. And we can see the resulting JSON string without the financial rating property, even though it was present in the original object. Now, I have to mention that if you use anonymous or dynamic objects in your code and you want to serialize them into JSON strings, both libraries provide the support out of the box. So, you can use the standard serialization process with both libraries and everything will work just fine. Let's show that as well by creating another method in the system text JSON class. You can see an anonymous object serialized and the dynamic one is currently commented out. Also, let's do the same inside the Newtons of class. Here, I have the anonymous object under the comment and I use the dynamic one for the serialization. So as you can see, I have covered both options. I have a serialization of the anonymous object in the previous method and in this one, I serialize the dynamic one. So, Let's get back to the program class, comment on these calls and call new methods. Once I start the app, you can see both objects serialized successfully. With this done, 
we can talk about controlling the date and time formatting during the serialization. SystemTextJSON uses ISO 8601 format when serializing date time or date time offset properties in our objects as you saw in our previous examples. However, we can customize that by creating a custom converter. So, I already have the general date time converter class created, and this class must inherit from the JSON converter class where I provide the date time as the type parameter. Now, let's implement this class and you can see two overridden methods. So, let's modify the first one and return the result where I use the date time parse exact method to convert the specific string. And as a first argument, I use the reader and call the getString method to read the JSON token value from the source. And if it's null, I just use the string empty. Then for the format, I use G as general format specifier. And for the culture, I instantiate the culture info class with the English US culture name. For the write method, I will use the writer parameter call the write string value method and provide the value parameter as an argument and convert it to string. Here again, I use a general formatting specifier and for the culture, instantiate a new culture info class with the English US culture name. Now, there are two ways to apply this new converter. Let's revisit the system.txt.json class and add a new method with a familiar implementation. So, to add a new converter to our options, I have to call the options.converters.add method and provide an instance to the general date time converter class. That's all. Let's navigate to the program class, comment on these calls, and add the call to the new method. Now, Let's start the app and see the date formatted differently. To show the second way of applying a new format, I have to comment out this code in the serialize method, open the person class and apply our custom converter to the specific property by using the JSON converter attribute and providing the type of the general date time converter class as an argument. Also, you have to pay attention to include the correct namespace because Newtsoft has the attribute with the same name. If I start the app again, we can see the same format. In Newtsoft, using a custom date and time format is done in a very similar way. Since the implementation is quite similar, I already have that implemented. You can see the logic is almost the same, just this time. I use the JSON converter abstract class as the base class, and I have to override three methods. The can convert method is used to verify that this custom converter can convert the specific type, in this case, the date time type. The other two are the same as in the previous class. With this converter implemented, I can use it in two ways. To show the first way, let's revisit the newts of class and add a new method here. Now, all I have to do is to modify the serialize object method. I want to have proper formatting here and I can instantiate the custom formatter I created as the last argument. Now, in the program class, I will comment on this line and add a new one to execute the new method. Once I start the app, we can see the format applied. Also, as I said, there is a second way to implement formatting, and it is the same as the one we use for system.txt.json. So first, let's just remove the custom formatter from the serialize object method to make sure we are using only the new way. Now, let's navigate to the person newts of class and apply the JSON converter attribute this time from the newts of JSON namespace 
and provide the type of the generate date time Newsoft converter. And that's all. Let's run the app again and we can see the same result. Finally, let's see how to handle the reference loops during the serialization. So, to see this, I already have two models prepared the employee model and department. Now, let's add one last method inside the system tag JSON class. And also, let's do the same for the Newtsov class. In both methods, we can see how the employee class references the department class, that in turn references back to the employee class through its staff property. Now, if I try to run any of these two methods, I will get an error. So, the best way to avoid this situation is to design our models so they do not contain reference loops. However, if that's not possible, JSON libraries offer options to help us deal with circular references. For SystemTextJSON, we can set the reference handler property to reference handler.preserve. With this, we instruct the serializer to preserve the object graph structure by including metadata in the serialized objects and to resolve reference loops using pointers based on generated unique object identifiers. So, let's see the result. And there's our object without any error. Now, alternatively, I can use the reference handler dot ignore cycles value to tell the serializer to simply ignore circular references. Let's check that one more time. And there you go, we have our object printed. On the other hand, with Newtsoft, our only option is to ignore the loop references using the reference loop handling property and setting it to the reference loop handling dot ignore value. Now, if you call this other method in the program class and run the app, we can see the same result. Just this time, there is no department property. Excellent. And with this, I will finish this video. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button if you like the video. And if you want to get notifications from our channel about future videos, you can also use the bell button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again in the next one. Until then, all the best.